So the client marketing strategy and the company profile are rather nebulous kinds of documents. You might say, how exactly does that apply to SEO? And as I've said, it helps you develop keywords and various concepts. More concretely, I have the third handout here. Let's look at this one and see what this is all about. Last week we spent some time setting up the webmaster tools. We didn't quite finish setting up, for example, Google Analytics. I don't think we're exactly going to have the time to come back to it because, again, sometimes this class is four weeks long, sometimes it's three. And when it's three, we just have less time to do everything. So whatever we didn't quite do last time, you should hopefully be able to extrapolate what we did do for you to then do what we didn't do. We covered Bing Webmaster Tools and Google Webmaster Tools. We needed Google Analytics. It's going to be a similar kind of process. And if we have lab time and such, we might touch on it. But the third document here, if you open up this file, this talks about backlinks, a backlinks strategy. Nowadays, the search engines care about quality more than ever. The ranking of your website is elevated when sites link to it. Backlinks, then, are very important to create authority and quality on your website, which in turn raises the page rank. This will take us back again to what we've been saying over and over. Longevity, authority, content. One of the ways that we build this authority is via backlinks. And that has multiple names. Backlinks also known as uh, inbound links, incoming links, links to your site, different names for the same sort of thing. It's a link from another website to your website. So as the search engines evolve, there have been different techniques that the search engines look at to help rank you. Keywords used to be the best way in the old days. Now we have to talk about long tail keywords. Um, but in the old days, if I simply had those keywords on my site, all over my site, the search engine could understand this site must be about that keyword. If my website, you know, if I'm a bakery and I had the keyword bakery, uh, all over my home page, my about page, my address. If I had that keyword all over the place, that was telling the search engine, this is a bakery website, so we'll rank them. Spammers abuse that. So now, as we've talked about in this class, we have to talk about long tail keywords. Uh, organic Bakery San Diego, gluten free cookies, um, wedding, wedding uh, cakes, affordable wedding cakes Chula Vista, Right? We have to be more specific in our keywords. Backlinks are another thing that the search engines look at to decide if your website is worthy. Because spammers can also abuse the long tail keywords. If spammers really want to reach you, they'll do what we're doing in this class. And that could result in more traffic for them. So here's another technique. What if another website links to your website? That is showing to the search engine you have something of value on your website. What if 10 links, 10 other websites, 10 different websites link to your website? That's showing the search engine even more your website is valuable. Now I'm not saying a certain number of backlinks is what you need to get. I'm just saying links from other websites to your website is what you need to get. The specific number, I don't believe that is publicly known and it most likely changes, and it most likely varies depending on a lot of factors. So I can't tell you. Make sure you've got seven backlinks and you'll be number one. Cannot say that at all. I don't know that. The search engines don't tell us that. Because if they tell us that, then the spammers will, will do that, and they'll be number one. So I want to link from another website. We need to define this. We need to say, from a relevant website. Because a spammer could create one website about selling 
uh, weight loss pills and creates seven more websites, one about watches and one about shoes and one about pets, and takes all of those and links them to the main weight loss pill website. In theory, there's now a bunch of links pointing to the one website. So in theory, that should help the ranking. No, because what does a shoe website have to do linking to a weight loss website? What does a pet shop website have to do with linking to a weight loss website? Nothing. It's not relevant. It's spam. It's a spam technique. So you want links from other websites related to what you're about. I'm a bakery, so I want other food-related websites pointing to my website. Another, another bakery? Sure. A blogger that writes about food? Yeah. Uh, some link from Twitter about an, about a, an article about the best uh, alternatives to sugar. I wrote an article on that on my blog, and then I've got someone tweeted that, and that's a link to my website. So links from other websites related to your website, links that you did not pay for or ask for, that sounds very limiting. If I can't go to some other website and say, can you link to me, how am I possibly going to get a link? If I can't pay another website to link to me, how am I going to get a link? I'm going to show you specifically in just a moment how to address that but yeah that sounds like a high bar and it has to be because the spammers can abuse it the search engines will look at this website and all of its links it'll look at your website and all of the links to it the search engines have access to that we can see that as well that's what this handout is about so the search engines will see all of these connections to your site and it'll see there's a lot of spam websites pointing to this website to your website why would we rank them? They're probably a spammer too. And as I've said before, the search engines nowadays, they have to be very strict. They have to be, they have to operate under guilt by association. Guilty until proven innocent. Shoot first, ask questions later. The search engines have to treat you badly first, most likely, because there's so much spam out there. And you have to prove that you're not a spammer sometimes. Question? How do you know if there's spam links to your website? Well, that's what this handout is about. In a moment, we'll, okay. we'll look into that. But um, a lot of spam links to your site could hurt your site. On the opposite, on the flip side, a lot of good links to your site could help your site. If I have, for example, this client, I mentioned them before, I believe, akiestexcoco.com. This is a restaurant. They've got a lot of links pointing to their site. I can look, I can open that up I can open that screen up to show you, but there's a lot of links pointing to this site. There's a link from the Travel Channel. There's a link from Zagat. There's a link from the LA Weekly. There's a link from this food critic. There's a link from this, 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 and that. There's links from all of these external um, entities, legitimate entities. A food blogger, a food critic, uh, a video reviewing the food, um, other restaurants. One of the articles here is about is about one of the ingredients that they use. And I think I <coughs> did this previously, perhaps. If you go to a search engine and you search, what is wheat la coche? In this result here, it's the second highest link in the whole world. That client, our client that I'm showing you. So there's content that is getting found by the search engines. There's often times, as we see in our webmaster tools, we often see some other website about food linking to that article. 
and backlinks a related a related article. So these backlinks, good backlinks help your authority. They show the search engine. Think about it in this way, when you had to write, if you've had to write a paper in a class, let's say a 10-page paper, especially in college, if you're going to write a big paper in college, and you wrote a 20-page paper and you turned it in, and at the very end of the paper you did not have the works cited link, uh, the works cited page, the bibliography page, if you turned in a paper without a bibliography in college, what happens? They throw that paper away. It's an F. Because you have no references, you have no resources. You might be brilliant, but you have to prove this 20 pages of information. I didn't make it all up. I stood on the shoulders of giants. I got research from other journals and other websites and books, and I synthesize something into a 20-page paper that I'm turning in for a grade. I have a bibliography that shows I got resources. You chose those resources most likely because they bolstered the claims of your paper. They helped, your paper was helped by the sources that you used when you cited on your paper. In a sense, that's what backlinks are. If your website is good enough, valuable enough, other websites will link to it. And that's showing the search engines your website is valuable. Your website has authority. Your website should be ranked higher than the competition that has no backlinks. Maybe that other website has lots of blog posts, but no one is reading them, no one is linking to them, no one is sharing them. On your website, maybe you have a quarter of the content than your competitor, but your content is so good, it's getting you a lot of authority from links from other websites. So in this document here, I mentioned the books again, uh, the two recommended books for the class. I'll pull up an excerpt for one of them a little later. And it goes here specifically, where can you see your backlinks? Where can you see your good links and your spam links on the webmaster tools? Where can you see it in Google Search, Google Analytics, and Bing webmaster tools? We set up Search Console and Webmaster Tools from Bing last week. If you log back into it and go to those links, it'll show you backlinks. I'll pull up some examples in just a moment. Uh, then I have some activities to do with that. The search, en uh, the, the search engine, the Webmaster Tools, will give you a list of all of these links. But you still need to yourself check them and confirm them. Are they good or bad? Because we have something we need to do if they're good, and we have something that we need to do if they're bad. So I'm saying here, I'll log in in just a moment and I'll show what it looks like. But I want to download this report of backlinks. I want to download it, and it lets you download it like a spreadsheet file, like, a, like an Excel file. And the point of downloading it is that then I can make notes on it, I can color code it, and so forth, because I need to do still some research. Here's going to be a list of 10 links, and I'm going to be able to tell on some of these links, just by looking at the link, it's a spam link. And I'm going to be able to tell on some of them that it's not. And I'm going to not be able to tell on a lot of them. If I've got a link to a website that says, get, get lots of traffic.com, clearly spam. If I have some sort of link to my site that says optimize your website.org, maybe it's still spam. I have to check it. That's what we'll, we'll do in just a moment. But uh, downloading your report is valuable. We do this for the client. I say here, review this periodically, like once a month. Log into these webmaster tools once a month, uh, download the report, see what's changed, what's the same, because let me jump down to the bad backlinks first. As I'm saying here, spam links, <coughs> spam links or bad links 
can drag you down, can hurt you. So, what to do with bad links? Disavow them. Which is, tell the search engine to not take them into account when ranking your site. So I'm going to log in and I'm going to see there's I've got lots of traffic to my website and as I further look at the data it shows I'm getting a lot of website traffic from from countries and locations that don't make sense and I, I hate to say it but a lot of times unfortunately if you've got a lot of traffic and it's coming from Russian websites Chinese websites Indian websites unfortunately Eastern European websites I have to say a lot of times that's those are spam hubs those are places where uh, a lot of spam traffic originates from obviously from all over the world but the studies show the data will show that a lot of sites from those areas Russia India China Eastern Europe, um, it's a lot of spam. And so if I look at my report and I have uh, all of these links, perhaps that's what's holding me back. Perhaps that's what's preventing me from ranking very well. Because the search engines, again, have to operate under guilt by association, uh, guilty until proven innocent. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a spam duck. So we're getting labeled as a spammer because we have a lot of spam links pointing to our site. Under the bad backlinks section I have here, these are the this is the process. In Bing, you want to log in, go to your dashboard, click here, click here, and then list the links that are bad. And Bing will then review them and in some amount of time will then stop paying attention to those links. It will not disconnect that website, that spam website from your website, but it'll stop keeping track of its traffic and it'll stop weighing you down. Google has a method as well to disavow these backlinks, these bad backlinks. Google's is a little bit more complicated because Google is the larger search engine. If you disavow a legitimate source of traffic, that could hurt you a lot. If you accidentally said, that website is spam and it's linking to me, Google will say, great, we'll take it out. But now you've lost all of this good SEO result from that link that you accidentally labeled as a spammer. So their process is a little more complicated. There is no button in the webmaster tools in Google to directly go to disavow because it could be so detrimental to Google. I have the direct link in my handout here. And I have also here, if you search Google for Google Disavow Tool, it'll bring up the link. And this process, again, is a little more cumbersome because with Bing, I just copy and paste the address to the Disavow Tool and click Save, and it does it. For Google, I have to write in a text file the list of the of the bad links, and I'll show this ex exactly in just a moment. We're talking about it in, in theory. But I have, to sh I have to sort of upload a little document to Google and tell them these are the bad backlinks. And Google asks you also to try harder in that it wants you to try on your own first to resolve the issue, meaning Google wants you to go contact that spam website and say, please remove the link. Good luck with that. But you have to at least try that. And when you upload your file, you have to write notes in your file. Again, I'll show the example in a moment. But Google's is much more work. And it could be a good result because then you start to rise in the rankings. Google will see this webmaster, this person that has this website cares about their website. They are trying to do all the right things. Let's rank them higher than the competition that just has a bunch of spam links that they never took care of. So what you're going to do with bad links is disavow them as soon as possible. You need to tell the search engine, don't, don't pay attention to these links. Is, is there any way to address how you know whether it's a um, spam or not a 
yeah, like I said, in a moment, I'm going to log in in just a moment, and then we're going to see what it looks like. Yeah. So then we've got the opposite, what to do with good links. Promote the good links that promote you. This is a roundabout way of saying you need to take advantage of these good links um, to help you get better results. So here's an example. I think I wrote it right here. Taking advantage of your good backlinks. Um, you can create more authority for your site. The tactic is to link quality content to links that link to your own site. For example, tweet about a positive restaurant review that you got. On Facebook, post about a link to a blog post that positively reviewed your product. Um, in the book, I'll pull up an excerpt about it in a little bit. The book gives you a little more info on that. The more good content that is pointed to sites that link to you, the more your SEO rank could increase. It's a lot of work, but it could pay off. So what I'm saying here, and when I log in, I'll show the example. But let's say I have, I see in my backlinks report that someone wrote a review about my restaurant, my bakery. It was a, it was you know, a, a short, positive review about my my company. What I'm going to do then is, I'm going to post on Facebook and say something like, we're so honored to have such a great review. Thank you, John Smith, and a link back to their, back to their link. I'm going to copy and paste their link in my Facebook. I'm going to share someone else's link on my company Facebook. <clears throat> and that sounds like I'm giving free promotion to the other. I am, but that's going to create a positive feedback loop. I'm sharing someone else's link about me. And I've got, let's say, 50 followers. So some people have not seen that link. They will go follow that link, giving them traffic, and then that link points back to my website, giving me traffic back. Maybe one of those 50 followers of mine shared that post to their friends and said, hey, check out this restaurant I keep telling you about. And they share their article to their friends. It reaches more people. So those people see that article, which has a link back to my website. Again, more of that feedback loop back to my website. I'm going to give a little bit of free promotion to another website that is talking well about me, speaking well about me, which then helps my website share their content about you on your social media to help spread that message which helps spread your message. It's like friends of friends. Uh, you reach more people, you have a direct connection with, with a certain amount of people, and then they have connections with connections. So you could reach more people that way. So it all sounds very um, nebulous. I'm going to log into my first. I'm going to check out my Bing Webmaster Tools. Uh, if you would like to do the same, I recommend it. So last week we set this up, so try this. Go to bing.com/toolbox and log in with the information with the account we created last week. show you what it all looks like. We'll try to see what a spam link looks like and we'll see what we do about it.
If you're not able to log in right now, don't worry about it. I'll just show you what I have here. Again, it's on the handout, and I'm recording this. And we have our limited time, remember. So if you managed to, um, to sign in, um, the whole point of setting up what we did last week is to see all of this data. So in general, I'm seeing all of these stats. There's red, and there's green, and there's blue. Uh, a red means that within the time period here, we um, we have less of something at the top right corner. The time period is 30 days, but the longer you have this set up, the better. So if I've got this, if I set it for three months, I get a better sense of things. You know, something might be negative for one month, but then in the longer term, it's positive. So just because you've got negative numbers, red numbers, doesn't mean it's completely bad. It's just telling you that within the certain time period, something is a little less. And the longer you have it set up, the better. Let's say I'm going to pull up any one of these clients. As my handout says, in, B in Bing, we have to go to the dashboard, reports and data, inbound links. So I'm in the dashboard of my site, reports and data, inbound links. Bing shows these are pages on your site and how many links are pointing to them. About 692 different links are pointing to the home page of that client. 28 to this one, 18 to that one, and so forth. That sounds great. I've got lots of traffic. It could be spam traffic. So if you click either on the link or the number, it'll open up to show you what is the actual link. SanDiego.eater.com is pointing to the home page. SanDiegoEater.com is pointing. Uh, what else? LA.eater.com, Zagat.com. So different websites. This tool is just to tell you, and Google's is very similar, is just to tell you here are the links to your website. And you will know as you do this, you will, you will be able to discern what's spam and what's not. I don't see one just yet, but I'm sure one will pop up here. It's some of these that are obvious that they have these names about getmorefollowers.com, um, sell more sellmoreproducts.org, optimizemysite.biz, you know, those sorts of names, you can often tell right away that it's a spam site because a real website isn't going to have such an obvious sort of, okay, maybe this one right here, I think I found one, htmltagstat.com. I can't tell what the website is about with that link, topwebsiterank.com. Those might be spam. I can't tell simply by the name. I do have to click to follow the link. That's really the only way to make sure the link is spam or not. Unfortunately, of course, clicking onto that uh, could be also problematic. Uh, there's so many examples of sites that right away when you log into them, they start to try to infect you with, with spam and viruses. So this is hard, you know, hard to, hard to teach, hard to tell you. This is spam, this is not. You're going to see this as time goes on. You're going to get a sense of what's good and what's bad. I can tell right away, ishmltagstat.com, topwebsiterank.com. They don't sound like any legitimate website that I've known. Um, all these other ones, comparatively, you know, Eater.com, that's a food website, Food GPS, TripWhat, it's about planning trips, Foursquare, Food Talk Central. All of those make sense for this client. This is a food client. If this client were a web design client, why is Food Talk Central linking to it? 
why is fujps.com linking to it, to a shoe website? In those cases, then, those links might be spam for that client. Victor? Yes. As an example, Victor approach from El Pastor. You said El Pastor has a Greece Expo code linking on their page. Mm -hmm. Why would they do that without your permission or your knowledge? Well, that's not a bad thing, without your permission or without your knowledge. We're seeing how we want to have links from other websites to our site. That's good. Now, this is different than someone stealing our content. That, of course, is bad. I don't want someone to steal the pictures on this site. I don't want them to steal the text. But if some other website simply links to our website without asking us, without me knowing it, that's not necessarily bad. I'm going to know about it once I see this report here. And I'm going to see these fake spam websites. Now that's bad. So. <clears throat> The search engines want other websites to link to your website. So, Victor, as, the yeah. last one, as an example again for the last one, huh? do you know which page is your main tab? Yeah, it shows you right here. The this page here tells you the home page is getting a lot of links. This catering page has two links, so it tells you what page you're getting traffic to. And it tells you which page it's coming from. That's what I'm about to say. When you click, it'll then tell you right here. It's coming from San Diego.com slash blah 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 that HTML. So here it's telling you what the exact page it's coming from. Thanks. So I have to go check. Is San Diego.com legitimate? I go click, I view it. Very very bird. Burn this is San Diego, I know San Diego, blah blah blah. This seems legitimate. It's promoting this site very well, this client very well. It's it's uh it's a good Victor? site. Yeah. Third question, which is unanswered. I'm generally personal, I don't like to click on any mm -hmm. strange pages. Mm -hmm. I only go to Yahoo or Google. Mm -hmm. What do you, what's your solution for that? Yeah, this is a difficult difficult thing because I won't be able to tell exactly if it's a bad link unless I click on it, but that could be a trap. That could be full of spam. Um, I don't exactly have an easy answer for, for most people. What I do personally is I load a virtual machine and run it through a virtual machine. Now, how many of you know what a virtual machine is? One person. So it's a very technical thing to do, which is like I'm running a mini computer inside of my computer, which is sandboxed and protected. That's obviously <coughs> 10 steps beyond what the average person is going to do. So I don't have an answer, really, for the regular person. That might infect my computer with spam right away. Uh, I don't have too much of an answer to give. And that's why looking at the, the actual title of the site is one of, one of the indicators that helps me to see if it's spam or not. Question. So, uh, we are last week you were talking about the webmaster tools. Mm -hmm. They will check the links. Mm -hmm. with, uh, if you do that, the links, like, just with a background check? Or um, you know, I think there might be a tool somewhere in the search engine about, um, I mean, in the webmaster tool, about checking a website. That's a good point. Um, Text Explorer. There's so many different screens here, so. There might be a screen here where you can have Bing or Google check for us that site. I think, now that I think about it, um, let me try this Google Page Insights.
this could be a way to do this. So let's try this. If you um, if you search for open a new window or tab and search for Google Page Speed Insights. I don't have this written anywhere in the handout, but I'll write it in my notes in a moment. We can use Google Page Speed Insights to have it check a website for you where you don't have to click the link. Google Page Speed Insights. Uh, click the result that is Page Speed Insights, not the insight you think. Page Speed Insights. The purpose of this tool is to check the speed of a website. But I suppose what we could use it for is, I don't know if Jordan and Kenzie.info is a good website. So I can copy that link and paste it into this P page speed insights box and have Google for me click that link and I'll get a little preview of what the page looks like either on a mobile or desktop. It's not the best again. So this could be a way to have it scan it only really shows the home screen and that might not really be enough so again this is this is not very easy to explain for a for a layman unfortunately like i said i personally have to do a very sort of advanced technical thing to be the most secure and I don't want to send you guys off blindly clicking on these obviously so as you see your report uh, this uh, informs you about what could be spam or not but think about this our computers in this lab have deep freeze remember our computers here whatever you do to these computers if you save something to the desktop restart the computer it goes away you could browse these websites on our computer and if our computer gets some some virus or whatever you just restart our computer and it goes away we have that deep free software so that's a possible solution obviously you have to come to, to campus to do that yipit.com never heard of it before I can't really tell what it's about. I would click on it and then check what the site is. Get coupons. Every deal in your city. Well, might not really be spam. Well, this website is, I was curious, so it's, it's just someone's personal website, and maybe, I don't know, what is it? Thank you for a wonderful day. Looks like it's some couple's website. And then they mentioned the Texcoco client as one of their favorite Mexican food places. Guess that's good. Something like HTML tag stat.com. This seems pretty spammy. Again, how can I tell? It's not a thing that I can really teach. You have to look at the site and see what it has. If it's full of ads, that's often a giveaway. So in my experience, I, I do have a few perhaps tips.
tips to spot a spam site. Does the address not make sense? So if it's something, you know, a weird word like tripsty.net or more obvious is the address full of bogus keywords. Is the website address itself something like getfreefollowers.com or affordable uh, visitors to your site.biz? Is the site full of ads? The purpose of, the, of people making these spam sites is that someone might accidentally click one of these ads. <coughs> And when people click ads on a website, someone makes money off of that. So there's a big ad at the top. There's three on the top here. There's four ads so far. Some legitimate stuff, perhaps. And then other stuff down here. Five ads on one screen. So I could accidentally hit any of these, and then this company profits. Now, also what happened is I got a redirection. I thought I just clicked on tag stats htmltagstat.com and I clicked on it and it took me to checkweb.com that's another indicator of a spam site does the original link redirect to another link Question. So whenever you, whenever it tells you one value but doesn't actually list anything, that often means that those are spam websites, so it's not going to show them to you. So there could be lots of traffic or lots of links from spam websites, but to protect you, it's not going to show them or count them. So that's okay that it doesn't uh, doesn't show them because I don't I don't want these spam sites to be linking to me or to be relevant. Exactly, if it's not showing up down there, it's not taking into account. So let's say uh, I'm looking at the, uh, th this report right here. As I say in my handout, you have the ability to export this. Each one of these screens, you can click Export. It'll say, what would you like to do with it? I'm going to save it or download it. And it, this will open up as an Excel document. And then so from here, I can also look at the um, the report If I download the report, I've got a list of all of the links where it's coming from. LA Times slash whatever for HTML. 
so it shows where the, the link is coming from, what was the text that is the active link. Uh, and the point of downloading it is that then I can make notes and color code it and say, well, that's a good one right there, this is a good one right here, this is a bad one right here. So I'm going to be doing this once a month. I'm going to be compiling, downloading this report, and what I do with the good links, so San Diego Tacotopia, that's a good link. I, I log into Instagram, and I share something on Instagram with that link. I go to Twitter, and I tweet something about that link. That uh, creates that feedback loop of I'm sharing something good about my company and therefore that good link gives me good more good traffic back to me. Any of these links that are bad, I have the procedure here. I, I won't actually go through it, but it's in the handout right here. You have to go through it and submit these bad links to the search engines and say don't take these into account. It might take a few weeks, a month or two, it depends. But then those links will stop counting. Those bad backlinks will stop counting. And it will then cause you to start to rise in the results. And as you do the, the good tactic on the good links, that will help start to help you as well to rise. So that's the whole point of having these webmaster tools. To check your back your backlinks, what's good, what's bad. That assumes you have backlinks. That assumes you have good backlinks. We're going to take a break and then we're going to talk about the the part of the handout where I'm where I'm going to pull up a little um, excerpt of the book because if I said earlier, I want backlinks, but I can't ask for backlinks, and I can't pay for backlinks, how am I going to get links to my site? And it sounds like a, it sounds like a catch-22. I need traffic to my website to get traffic. I need hits to my website to get more hits. I need to have some ranking on the search engine to get more ranking on the search engine. Well, how do I do it if I'm at zero? We'll take a break. When we come back, I'll show examples of concrete things that you can do besides keywords, because that's the basic, when we come back. So at 7.35, we'll be back at 7.45.